The next integration technique we will be looking at is trigonometric integrals. Now, before we look at trigonometric integrals, I just need to remind you of some trig identities that you have encountered before. If you've, with your introduction to trigonometry, a lot of these identities would have come forth. You might have seen all of them. You might want to pause to just check if they are familiar to you. But these are trig identities we will be using. So keep them in mind. All right. So this is one of the types of integrals we're going to look at today. Something like this, sine to the power of 5x cos x dx. Now, when we looked at substitution and integration, we also looked at integrals of this type. We're just going to expand that now. What we notice is we've got sine of x, we've got cos of x. They're each other's derivatives, so substitution looks like a good idea. And we just need to choose which one do we substitute. Now, I'm going to do both and show you that one works out a little bit easier than the other. So let's start by saying, let u be equal to sine of x. du is then cos x dx, because we see sine is there to the power of 5, and its derivative is cos x. The differential du is then cos x dx. So the whole cos x portion will be swallowed up when I do my substitution. So that integral will become the integral of u to the power of 5 du. So we've simplified it dramatically. That is 1 over 6, u to the power 6 plus c. So that gives me 1 over 6 sine to the power 6x plus c. And like always, you can take the derivative and see that you integrate it correctly. Now, let's say we chose the other way around. The integral of sine to the power 5x cos x dx. Let's say we wanted u to be cos x du is then minus sine x dx, which is also present here, but I've got sine to the power 5. So that one, if I write it as sine to the power 4x cos x times sine x dx, then we see, well, that portion can be swallowed up with the differential du. But now I still have sine to the power 4. Now, sine to the power 4 is just sine squared squared, and this is where our trig identities come in. That's one, sine squared is 1 minus cos squared x squared because it's sine to the power 4. So this is just the sine to the power 4 times cos x times sine x dx. Now I can make my substitution, and I'll have a minus for this minus. So we've got the integral of... 1 minus u squared squared times u du. That one we can then multiply out and simplify. That is minus the integral of 1 times u is u. We've got minus 2u squared times u is minus 2u cubed plus u to the power 4 times u is plus u to the power 5 du which is then minus a half u squared minus 2 over 4 u to the power 4 plus 1 over 6 u to the power 6 plus c. And then we need to take it back to cos, to our cos x and substitute that in. Now these answers look differently. They don't look the same, but with some manipulation using trig identities, we can get them to look the same. But hopefully you agree that the first version is much quicker and easier than the second version. But the second version gets us to the answer. But the first version is easier. So what we noticed is we've got sine to the power 5. We've got only one cos x. So I let u equal to sine. All right, let's look at this one. Here I've got sine cubed cos to the power 4x. Now, the question is, what do we want to let u equal? What I'm going to do... I'm going to look at this one because we know the squares, cos squared and sine squared, we can change to the other one. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine squared x, cos to the power of 4x. Then I still have another sine x floating around. But I'm going to keep that separate because I know if I let u equal to cos x, the sine x dx will be swallowed up into the differential du. So because sine was an odd number, I took one of them out. And then sine squared, I can write as 1 minus cos squared x times cos to the power 4x times sine x dx. Now we can make our substitution. 
and we say let u be equal to cos x, du is then minus sine x dx, so I've got minus the integral of 1 minus u squared times u to the power 4 du, which is minus the integral, let's tidy up what's in there, we've got u to the power 4 minus u to the power 6 du, so that's minus 1 over 5 u to the power 5, minus 1 over 7 u to the power 7 plus c. So let's take it back to x, and we've got minus 1 over 5 cos to the power 5x plus 1 over 7 cos to the power 7x plus c. So we looked at which one had the odd number, and we separated one of them out. So let's look at one more. The same idea, sine is squared, cos is to the power 5, so I'm going to take one of the coses out. So that is the integral of sine squared x times cos to the power 4x times cos x dx. So if I let u equal to sine x, then this cos x dx will be swallowed up with du. So let's just change the other coses to sine, so that's the integral of sine squared x times Cos to the power 4 is cos squared squared, so it's 1 minus sine squared squared times cos x dx. Now we look at our substitution, and we let u equal to sine x, du is then cos x dx, so we've got the integral of u squared times 1 minus u squared squared du. So first, tidy up what's in the integral before we start integrating. If we tidy this one up, we get the integral of 1 times u squared. So we've got u squared minus 2u. 2u squared times u squared is minus 2u to the power 4 plus u to the power 4 times u squared is plus u to the power 6 du. Now we can find the antiderivative. That's 1 over 3u cubed minus 2 2 over 5 u to the power 5 plus 1 over 7 u to the power 7 plus c. And we can change it back to our original, which is sine x. So I've got 1 over 3 sine cubed x minus 2 over 5 sine to the power 5x plus 1 over 7 sine to the power 7x plus c. So yet again, we identified the one with the odd number, and we took that one out. Now, if we go back to our first example, which we did in two ways, both had odd exponents, and that is why we could do it in two ways. So we just had to be strategic in which way to choose. But if the sign has got an odd number and cos even, we take one of the signs out and the other way around. All right, now let's look at the next one. What if I only have sine squared there? Now, changing that to 1 minus cos squared doesn't help using the same technique we can, we've looked at now. But what we can do is we can look at the double angled formula where we can have sine squared in, the term, in terms of cos of 2 theta. Because cos of 2x, I can find the antiderivative of. So let's look at that. I'm simply going to rewrite that using that identity, a half 1 minus cos of 2x dx. The half you can take out, and I've got the integral of 1 minus cos of 2x dx. So the antiderivative of 1 is just x. Now let's look at the antiderivative of cos of 2x. I've got minus cos of 2x, so it's minus sine of 2x. It's not just that. If I take the derivative of sine of 2x, I get cos of 2x times 2. So I want to get rid of that 2, so it's minus a half sine 2x. If you're not comfortable with doing it in one step, you can let u equal to 2x and do it with a substitution, and you will see you'll get to the same place, plus c. So that is a half x plus a quarter sine 2x plus c. Now I just want to mention, sine of 2x we can rewrite as 2 times sine x cos x. For this example, if this is all we are after, we don't need to do that. But when we look at trigonometric substitution in integration, we're going to have to take this one step further. So keep this in mind. For now, we're just looking at how to cope with the integral of sine squared x without looking at trig substitution. That's coming in a later section. All right, so the last example, we're going to look at a definite integral, but this time cos squared. But yet again, we're going to use that double angled formula, 
simply rewrite that. That's the integral from 0 to pi of a half times 1 plus cos of 2x dx. So that's, I can take the half out, 0 to pi of 1 plus cos 2x dx. So that give us, gives us a half times x plus sine of 2x. But that's not enough. I need the half there to eliminate the 2. So if I take the derivative of a half sine 2x, I get a half cos 2x times 2. So that's cos of 2x everything between pi and 0. So we've got a half times pi plus a half sine 2 pi minus 0 minus a half sine 0. Now sine of 2 pi is 0, 0, 0, sine of 0, 0, so that just gives me pi over 2. Right, in the next video we're going to be looking at some other trig identities and how to use them to help us simplify a trig integral to something that's easier to integrate.